there was a Korean lady, an elderly lady, she had dementia and uh, maybe even Alzheimer's. And she would show up at different places all over Manhattan. You never knew when you were gonna see her, but you felt like you were gonna see her every day. She might be at Penn Station one day. She might be in Grand Central Station the next day. But everywhere she went, she said, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And she was the hallelujah grandmother. That's what we called her. She went to glad tidings. She was in the big Korean service. And she was a born again, saved, happy Korean grandmother. But she was lost in the sense that she was suffering from dementia and disorientation. Now, some people, when they read John 3.16, for Hashem so loved the Olam has said that he gave his ben yochet so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, should not be lost, but have haye olam. They think, oh, being lost, that's not so bad. If hell is just being lost, well, you wouldn't say that the hallelujah grandmother was in hell. She, she was lost, but she was quite a happy lady. But I want to go back and throw some light on that word because there were some Gal Galileans, fellow Galileans. I think they were from the Galilee. Anyway, they were talking about Galileans. And they said the Mashiach ben Dovid, they said, you know, some terrible things happened. There were some Galileans that Pilate put to death and there were some other people that had that died terrible deaths and the implication was these people were really big sinners but his response was unless you repent you will perish just like them you have to realize it's not well if you do certain sins you're going to die in a more terrible way than other people who don't do certain sins. No, everybody has to repent. And repentance is part of faith. And without repentance, there's no true faith. So if you live your whole life and do all kinds of great things for God, and people consider you a great preacher, and yet you don't repent, but you live a double life. And you go on with these, these wicked things, uh, thinking that no one knows that it's okay, that God is smiling. He's saying here, unless you repent, preacher, I will say, I never knew you. Now, most preachers that I know really don't talk like that. They say, look, Phil, you're making repentance like a, a, a work, and people have to do works to be saved. Well, I would turn it around the other way. You're preaching a cheap grace that does not line up with the scriptures. I'd like to uh, just take a moment and talk about this word for perish. You know, if you go to the refrigerator and uh, there's some milk that has soured, you forgot it was there, it was in the back of the refrigerator and several weeks went by and then one day you notice some kind of odor or whatever, you open the refrigerator, you look back there, you wonder where's the odor coming from and you see that the milk has gotten bad. It has become rotten. There's a word, far foilt. It means rotten. It means become rotten. Um, remember Yeshua? Uh, you remember in Psalm 
Tehillim chapter 16, verse 10. The Ben Dovid Mashiach will not see Shahat. His body will not rot. There will be no rotting. At the end of Isaiah, it speaks about their worm, the grave worm, the maggot never dies. The corpses are in putrefaction and that putrefaction goes on for eternity. It is a very scary, horrendous picture of Gehinom, the very last verse in Isaiah. And then of course, Dera'on, which is also there, is Dera'on Olam in Daniel chapter 12, verse two. So when we think of this word, to rot, to perish. It is worse than being lost. It's much worse than being lost. We talk about, oh, our lost relatives, our lost friends, and we try to give a good spin to the word. We don't want to say in danger of rotting or in danger of making home uh rotting but my friend that's what the word means and he says where i am there you shall be also he says this because he wants you to know that he his body will not see shahat and his body is will be glorious and he's going in that body to prepare a place for them. And when they come there, they will have a body like that because he's actually modeling for them the resurrection body, which does not see Shahat. However, my friend, if you go to Gehinom, you will see Shahat. You will be far foilt. The word is rotten. You will perish like rotten food in the refrigerator, uh, you, you, you will uh, undergo this uh, horrendous state. And the, the reason that the word lost is, is not um, sufficient, fe aleph resh lamed bav yod resh final noon. Uh, in the modern translations, only one translation, I think it's the International Standard Version, translates John 3.16 with the word lost. That whosoever believes in him would not be lost, but have everlasting life. But all the other mo modern translations do not say that. They say perish. And perish means die. But it also has the idea of putrefaction. The very thing that the Mashiach's body will not have, we see in the mortuary, we see the putrefaction. We smell the odor. We see the uh, fate that death brings. We see what it means to perish. Like when you go in the, in the supermarket and you pick up something off the shelf and it says non-perishable or does not need to be refrigerated, non-perishable. We know what that's talking about. But my friend, what I'm saying to you is that when I'm doing the Yiddish uh, translation and I get to these, these Greek words, and then I have an array of, of Yiddish words to choose from, I have to be very careful I choose the right one. For Hashem so loved the Olam Hazeh, this world, this passing world, he still loved it. How much did he love it? Enough to send the Zutpunder who was in glory, who was in paradise, 
who did not really need to come down here except to obey his father. And when he came down here, he died. He came to die. He came to make a ransom for many. He came to pay for the sins of the world. He died that we might live. He came as our goal redeemer. He came for the living and the dead. And he came knowing, and he said this, he said, you go and tell that fox, meaning Herod, that uh, on this day I do this, on this day I do that, and on the third day I finish my work meaning I will go back to paradise with my glorious body. It will not see Shahat. It will not perish. Uh, yes, he will die, and he did die, but the body did not see decay. That's very important. And the thing is, why did he do that? He did that so your body would not see decay so that your body would not perish, so that you could live and not die, so that you could have this wonderful, glorious resurrection body that he modeled for you. Uh, and Rav Shaul said, there is a crown uh, waiting for me. I fought the good fight. I've kept the faith. I've finished the race. And now this crown of righteousness is, is, is waiting for me. Uh, and, and he knew that in the state of glorification, with that crown of glory, there would be no far foiled, rotten, perishing. And that for him, it would be the, like Psalm 1610, shahat, no shahat. You will not allow your Holy One to see Shahat. Hallelujah. And friend, this is so important. We need to preach this. Because people wonder, is this all there is to life? You just eat and drink and die and that's it? Is, is, is that all it means? Is there nothing else? And of course, there is something else. Something glorious something called glorification that this mortal will put on immortality that this dying body this body that sees corruption that sees aging wrinkles uh age spots uh arthritis and all the uh slings and arrows of of outrageous fortune come on this body of ours. And then it becomes old. And uh, then uh, it finally is in the casket. The undertaker puts a little powder on it, tries to sweeten the smell, a little bit of makeup. Then the lid goes down and the body goes into the ground. But if you are a believer, God so loved you that he gave his ben yochid so that whosoever believes in him and when you believe in him you have to believe that he is the judge the shofet kol ha'aretz and that you must repent of your sins because his eyes are too holy to look on sin you must turn from sin otherwise you will all alike perish. You will all perish. You who think you are believers, you will perish like the unbelievers. You will all go to the same rotting Gehinom. This is what it says in Luke chapter 13. You need to go back and look at that chapter. You need to inform John 3.16 with Luke chapter 13 and understand what it means to say that whosoever believes in him will not perish, 
but have eternal life. Now, I, I want to keep myself in the love of God. I want to preach to myself, lest preaching to others, I myself become a castaway. I want to preach hard to myself. I want to say, Gobo, listen to me. You lived the way you wanted to before. You almost went to hell. You got that close. You're not going to be permitted to go that route again. You can't go down that road again. I'm sorry. Narrow is the road that leads to life. There's a very narrow door. And you're going to go through that door, my friend. And I'm going to preach to you, Phil Goble. And I'm going to make sure that you understand that I, there's a narrow door of repentance. That without holiness, no man will see God. That if anyone thinks he is something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. If you think that you are a big name preacher and that you are famous and that you have done so many great things for God, that in a way God has to sort of look the other way with you because you're special, you know. You're, 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 you're a cut above. So there are little secret things that you can get a, away with that maybe other people who aren't quite as wonderful as you are, uh, they can't really get away with those things. But God will look the other way for you because you're his special pet. And um, by the way, he needs you. You're such a big deal now that he couldn't possibly uh, censor you or expose you because you're that important big name minister. So, you know, uh, we won't worry too much about the little aspect called Teshuva, which Yohanan of the Teuvelin uh, Mikvah preached, uh, you know, where he said, you Pharisees, who told you to escape the fire? How, how did you get down here? Uh, we know you're going to the fire. You may be big name ministers in Jerusalem, but you're going to the fire. You haven't repented. So this is not going to do you any good, this mikvah. Uh, you have to go back and see what Yohanan of the mikvah Toivalin Tushuva prophet Navi was preaching. It was all about this little word teshuva that you find in Luke chapter 13. My friend, get your doctrine straight. You have to preach to yourself the way I'm preaching to me right now. It's a narrow door. It's a very narrow road. And very few people find it. There's a lot of people who are deceiving themselves and they, they are lost and they, are, they, are, they, they have missed the door, they have missed the road. And one day they'll be outside knocking and the master of the house will say, well, who, where are you from? I don't know you. I can't let you in here. I don't know you. I never knew you. You can't come in. My friend, I'm preaching the scriptures to you now. You say it's a hard word. Well, I can't uh, make it any softer. I, I, can't, I can't change the Bible for you. All I can do is preach to myself and preach hard so that perhaps I can still be around that when you finally change your mind and decide that maybe you should repent as well, that uh, you'll still have me to preach and maybe you'll be preaching to me too because I can't change the gospel for you. Lord, I want to pray right now that somebody will get saved today. That somebody will see, it's me, O oh Lord, 
I'm the Haman of Purim. You were hanged on a tree for me, but if I don't repent, I'll be hanged on Haman's tree myself. Lord, I want to pray right now that everybody who hears this message will repent, that they will turn to God, and with fear and trembling, they will pick up the Bible and read it again. And I pray, Lord, that they will look at Luke chapter 13 and John 3.16 and come to a knowledge of Psalm 16.10 and the glorious thing that the Lord has done for us, that we can escape corruption. But the corruption of sin, we must repent of. Otherwise, it can pull us under. Because true faith repents. And true faith acts. And faith without works is dead. And I pray, Lord, that somebody will receive Yeshua HaMashiach today and realize what he did for us. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins today. Can you pray that with me? Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins today. I turn from all of them. I know I've neglected the scriptures. I know I need to come back to the Lord. I know I'm not right. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me. Set my feet upon a solid rock. Put the word of your wonderful salvation in my heart. And let me taste and see once again that the Lord is good that he loves me enough that he will not allow me to go on without repentance and that he will bring me back like he did Jonah, even if he has to use a, a big fish, a big submarine fish to scoop me up and spit me out where I need to be. And if I repent and turn from my wicked ways, then I can teach transgressors your ways, Psalm 51. And we'll give you all the praise. And everybody said, Amen.